Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I am back with another gardening project. So today we are talking all about peonies. I'm so excited because I have been waiting for these for a long time. So I am in zone 8B in Alabama, which means peonies are not um, super easy to grow here. They need more cold hours and we have a lot of hot hours, very few cold hours. They don't, they like full sun, but they don't necessarily like our full Alabama sun. So I have been waiting for our local nursery to get in um, a few varieties of peonies that they say do better in our Alabama heat um, than some others. This one is called Jacorma. It gets 36, 36 inches tall and wide. It can have pink or red blooms. There are a few buds on top that will hopefully turn into flowers. Um, and so I got two plants and we are going to go plant them down at the other end of the garden. But because growing peonies in the South can be a bit of a challenge, I have done some research and we are going to try a few things to just help these guys survive and do well. So the first thing you wanna know about growing peonies in the South is like I said, while they need full sun, full Alabama sun is not the same as like full Colorado sun. Um, we're military. We moved here from Colorado and in Colorado where you have lots of cold and not such strong hot sun and humid. Humidity here is a whole other beast. Um, you know, you just get peonies from the nursery. You put them in the ground. They grow. They're beautiful. And it's not um, not a big thing. But down here, you have to be really careful about where you put them. So they need six hours. A little less is okay. No more than six hours of morning sun. And then they need afternoon shade. So like all of this down here gets way too much sun in the afternoon they would not be happy. So we are going to put them down around my tree, down at the end of the yard, that gets morning sun. And then at about noon, it starts getting shaded. It gets full shade from two o'clock onward. So you will see down there, that's where my lupins are. That's where my, um, my one hydrangea does really well. That's where I have a Hibiscus, although I think I might move the hibiscus because it can handle more sun. That was just the only place I had to put it. Um, but that should be the perfect spot. If you have a little bit of a hill like it is down there, that is also pre preferable because they do not like, they like to have cold feet, but they don't necessarily like to have wet feet. So naturally well-draining soil is really good. You also need to make sure they have plenty of air around them. Don't quite understand why, but that was something I saw a lot of um, being recommended. So the two spots that I have to put these have, you know, they're not super overcrowded. I do like to plant my things kind of tighter together so they all grow up and together. They say to give your peony shrubs, bushes, plants, whatever you want to call them, a little bit more space. So hopefully we have that. And then third, or whatever we're on. I'll put a list on the screen for you. Um, the last two tips that I found um, from a video said that because peonies need a period of dormancy to go to sleep, that is one of the problems they have in the South because our plants don't really start dying back until very late in the season, like almost December, okay? And so they said November, cut them back to the ground, that's going to give them a forced period of dormancy where they say, okay, time to go to sleep. So cut them back to the ground in November and then starting December, probably start late November, all the way through January, you're gonna wanna come out and put ice on them. Give them an ice bath. They need cold to produce blooms. So I have read that over and over and over. In the South, you want to put ice on your peonies. I am not 100% sure how much ice. This is definitely going to be an experiment. Um, the things that I've read just say put ice on them. And one lady that I watched said that she's been doing this for years. And every time she would throw a party, she would take all the leftover ice and come out and put them on her peonies. And she grew peonies like that for many, many years in the South. Um, and a lot of the older gardeners that I've talked to do that. So I'm not sure how much ice 
means. I'm guessing you want to, at the very least, cover the entire area where the plant is at least once a week with ice. That's what I'm going to try and we will see how it works. But for today, we are going to go plant them. I will show you where I'm planting them. We'll plant them together, get them in the ground, and then I will give you guys updates as the season progresses on how they're growing, if they're going to bloom for us, and then in the fall, how we are going to cut them back to the ground and ice them. Biddy, get out of there. Sorry, my dog is like smelling one of my bushes. Now, Dina is not for you. Come on, Biddy, get out of the garden. Come here. Now she's standing on a daffodil. I only have one daffodil she's standing on. So we're going to go plant these. They say you do, if you're planting tubers, that is a whole different story. But since we're planting plants, you essentially want the soil level of your plant to be even with the soil level in your garden. I can see on this one where the tuber is coming out of the ground. I have one, two, three, almost eyes on that tuber above soil level um, and in all the videos that I watched that is kind of what you want the second one the crown of the plant is just barely over the soil level and I only see one eye um, that's not a bad thing it just might not be as robust of a plant as the other one so we're gonna go get these in the ground we've got some slow release fertilizer for them um, I have a knife so you have to cut some landscaping fabric away and I've got my auger and then my watering can will make sure to water them in really good once they're in the ground. So we are going to have to move a lily because it is in the perfect spot and it was going to have to move anyways. It's not getting quite enough sun. It's a day lily. So I think I'm going to pop it down over here where it'll get way more sun and we'll put the peonies in down in the shade where they'll be happier. Let's go. Put my notes away. All right, so we've got the lily transplanted. It looks great, and it should give us a little more height in this area, which will be nice. Now we are going to come down here and do the peonies. Whew. All right. Let's get y'all a good spot. Okay, so, Betty, come on. She just wants to be in the middle. This is where I'm going to put the two peony plants. I'm going to put one right here. It should have plenty of space right here to grow in, and then I'm gonna put one up there in front of the tree. So, hopefully we can get both of these in without disturbing too much. I do sometimes hesitate to uh, to put things because like this rose is technically right in front of where this peony is going to be and eventually this rose is going to be quite a bit bigger but especially with my garden what I've learned over the last year is you know you see things from angles as well and so you don't just need to look at a front view but side views especially for me I see my garden from down there for the most part so i will still be able to see this peony really well especially as it gets 36 inches um it should be a, a big bold plant to compete with the rose and if in the future one or the other is just too big and competing too much we'll move one Thank you. 
So as you saw, I have landscape fabric right here. So I just cut it in an X so that I can make a nice opening for my peony to go in. Do think that is the right size hole. So let's go ahead and get one of these in the ground. There is a decent sized tree root down here that we had to get around. It was the problem. There we go. With those tubers coming up right at soil level. Peony planted one. 
Um, you can see that the, the top of that dirt is even with the, the soil level, which does put the tubers and the eyes just a little bit above soil level. I found conflicting information about that, um, but most of what I set, saw said the eyes should be a little above soil or even. So we're going to see how that works. Let's do the other one. Almost forgot that asthma cold. All right, so see this big chunk fell away, exposing this part of the tuber and the eye. So we're gonna make sure it cut dirt back around there. We'll leave that. that is firm. Plant it around. And that looks pretty good. Get a little more water and finish watering these in, but I think that's pretty good. They're both in there tight up to the root um, top of the tuber. 
the eyes out of the soil. And um, one more thing I do want to mention, I have my garden top dressed with compost. I will come out a little bit more now that I've disturbed it. But that means when I'm digging my holes and planting things, I am mixing that compost in with the dirt. If I wasn't, you should probably add a little bit of compost to help feed these guys along with your slow release fertilizer. So I think I am pretty happy with that. Um, we're gonna go get cleaned up, but I will show you guys how these progress over the season. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more tips and tricks on growing peonies anywhere, but especially in the South, leave them below. I will see you in the next video. Bye.